We are building our homestead on a dead end street. There will be 12 homes on this street. Each home is on one acre of land. This street is surrounded by sagebrush, farmland, and other neighborhoods. We live about 10 to 15 minutes from town. So why did we choose to build our homestead here? Why not grow our homestead on 50 acres farther out? We have the goal to grow a lot of our own food, but we also have the goal to grow the community around us. I really want to be more self-sufficient. I want to grow the food that our family needs, but I also want to be the person that my neighbor can rely on. In fact, I want us to be able to rely on each other. And we definitely took that into consideration when picking out where we wanted to build our homestead. And we knew that we could accomplish all that we wanted on a single acre. But we have space between us, which I value greatly, but we can also be there for each other. And I'm not just talking about our street, I'm talking about the neighborhoods all around us. We are surrounded by farmland, but there are little pockets of neighborhoods all around us. And I love that. Something that I think that stops us from beginning our homestead journey is thinking that we don't have acres and acres of land. And I'm here to tell you that you don't need acreage to be a homesteader. We have the goal of self-sufficiency, but that doesn't mean that all we care about is us, our own personal needs, because I think that road isn't a happy road. That being said, it's okay to store up food for your family. I think it's a healthy idea for every family to have some type of food stored in their home in case of an emergency. And that's a goal we have for our family. But, but if a neighbor's in need, I wanna be the one who can reach out a lending hand and help. One thing that we are doing to promote community is that we are building a fire pit on the east side of our house. And from that area, you can actually see people walking by on the path behind me and also on the street. I want to be able to invite people we're starting to know to come join us for a treat around the fire pit. I want to let my neighbor's children run through the berry patch and eat berries till their heart's content. That's what I want. I feel that our world is becoming very self-centered. I know there's a lot of homesteaders out there who have all this fear and food shortages and relying on the government and a lot of things and and maybe it's okay to have those fears but i also have this fear that we are growing humans to become so concerned about themselves and i think that's more dangerous than anything else because if we can unite as a people then we can get through a food shortage, if that makes sense. Sure, be prepared, be prepared for if those things do happen, but also create a space in your heart for that ability to share with the people around you. So we have not been able to move into our house yet. We were told that we would be able to this week and now they're saying they can't get people in to do the final touch-ups of the home, which is a little frustrating to me, but it is what it is. So regardless of us being able to move in, we need to get our onions and our potatoes in the ground this week. So let's get started on that. I'm at the local nursery to see what onion options they have here. I, like you saw, killed a lot of our onions. And so I still want a good onion harvest. We're gonna go in and see what options they have and we might pick up a few onions here. I see they have Walla Wallas. Those are good option. They're not a storage variety. So they're like a sweet onion, so they wouldn't last super long. So I might look and see or ask if they have another option. If not, we'll just go ahead and do these. And then if they start to go bad after we harvest them, I can just dehydrate them and save them that way. I went ahead and picked up a few growing onions as well and a few onion sets. It will be interesting to see how each of these different onion types grow and which ones do the best. I also picked up several more sugar snap peas. My family loves snacking on these and we never seem to have enough. So I may dedicate an entire row to these. This is a dangerous place. I just want to buy everything here. Does anyone else feel that way at garden nurseries, especially in the spring when everything just looks fresh and alive and there's thousands upon thousands of plants I 
grabbed another sprayer while I was there too. My kids have totally destroyed my old one. We are back home now and I'm not going to be able to plant these onions right away so I'm going to preserve their roots by putting them in the soil keeping the soil moist until we can get to planting them. Something else I want to do while I'm out here is to remove the insulation I had put around my potted trees for the winter. It is getting warmer and closer to planting these on our homestead, so I want to have them ready for that. If growing fruit trees is something you want to do but don't have a yard, try growing them in pots. I've learned a lot about that this year. Get a large pot and fill it with some topsoil and put your tree in it. Fertilize it every spring before buds start to form. You will have to prune it to be small if you have a small space, but you should try it. You can totally do this with trees or any fruit bush really. You do need at least six to eight hours of sun though. But other than that, there really isn't anything that can stop you from growing fruit right now. So we are getting ready to do our first planting day other than the cover crops. We haven't moved in yet, but I just can't wait any longer to plant a few things like our onions here. We're going to get the onions in the ground and if we have time, the potatoes. So I'm going to take this hose we have here at our rental, quickly water all of our trees and plants and then bring this hose over to our house to reach all the way to the back. That way we can come every other day or so to our property and water the onions and potatoes. I'm probably a little ambitious to get the potatoes done as well as the onions. We have the seed potatoes that I cut already, so they are ready to go. I'm just gonna stick them in this box over here and bring the box, and if we have time to plant the potatoes, we will, but I have a feeling that our family will only have the time to prep a garden bed for onions and do the onions, but we'll see. Did you get the hose? Yeah. The onions and the potatoes, but onions first. We've got our crew ready here. So to get the garden row prepped, I'm gonna take the broad fork down the row and then we're gonna probably lay our compost on it and that'll be the row that we put the onions in. So after I'm broad forking, the kids are gonna come through and try to break up some of the clumps as best they can. For the onions, you do want the soil loosened for those bulbs to form. We rigged up the hose and it does reach all the way back here. So that is really good news. onions and put mulch down to keep the beds moist but we don't really have that right now maybe we'll have to get some out here it just dries out so quickly we did not have that problem in Virginia <laughs> such a beautiful sight let's go get the onions and see how many we can fit inside that row it would be great if we could fit all of them but that being said, the more onions, the better. So if we need to do another row, that's fine. We eat so many onions. We're not like a onion a week kind of family. We're like a couple onions a day kind of family. At least one a day. All right, Ginny, we're gonna plant these onions. Do you wanna come help me put some in the ground? Yeah. Okay, let's go. So I've only ever grown onions from seed. This year, as you know, I have killed many of my onions from seed. So I picked up just grown onions and then onion bulbs. And I wanna see which one is my favorite. Obviously the most affordable way to do onions would be starting all of your own onions from seed, which is probably what I'll end up doing. But as if I kill my onions again, we'll see if I like go for the bulbs or for the onion sets the next time. But I'll let you guys know which Onions perform best for me. We have several varieties. Um, it should be a fun experiment. I'll try this one first. You like purple? Yeah, I'll put, ah. uh oh. <laughs> you wanna do the red onions? They're called red onions, but they look purple, huh? Yeah, those ones. You wanna do those ones first? Okay. Yeah. Look at the bones. Whoa, these oh. have got lots of bones. Here, Mom, open these. You need to open them? Yeah. No, no, next to 
one is soft. They need to be three to four inches down in the dirt. So those ones might not be deep enough. I put my one right here. Oh, that looks good. One is really deep. No, watch out. Watch out, Mommy. Should I just finish this off? So we have these. So these, you take off each individual piece here and then plant it in the ground, kind of like the bulbs. So you plant that in the ground. So we have our red onions, our yellow onions right here, thank you Hazel. Then we have our Walla Wallas intermixed with the red onions I started from seed. They're kind of scattered in here. So we got all the onions planted, I would say probably three or four hundred. <laughs> You need to wash your hands. Meanwhile, <laughs> he's on Rowan's bike. <laughs> Our kids were doing great, so we decided to keep going, prep the next garden bed, and plant our potatoes. We did two rows of Yukon Gold potatoes all along this 50 foot garden bed. We had too many potatoes to fit in this row and the girls sort of crammed the last ones at the end here which might overcrowd the potatoes but I like to let the kids take ownership of things and if that means that the garden isn't perfect that's okay. A perfect garden is not my goal. I challenge you guys to grow something for someone else this year and I think it'll bring more happiness to you than you will ever know. Hey, darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light.